Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Jess Naughty and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to interlock your kitchen if you're trying to start micro locks. Now the back is always a problem area so I got you guys. First and foremost, you're gonna need this clip. Now I use these clips when I'm retwisting but they definitely come in handy for micro locks. I will be twisting on freshly washed hair now she hasn't had her hair washed in about two months so she was ready for this wash day i didn't do anything special i just washed her hair with shampoo and then followed with a conditioner i did have to shampoo her hair twice because it has been two months so she definitely needed her scalp to be rejuvenated if you haven't already you can go take a look at the video that i posted where I started her sister lot. If you do look at that video, then you'll see the only difference from then and now is that she had some locks where her nape area is and they're no longer there, which brings us to where we are today. I'll be reinstalling those sister locks, but this time around, I'm gonna interlock them with a crochet needle. If you guys take a good look above, then you guys will see the grid that I started her sister locks with. I'm going to try my very best to continue that very same pattern. I did start her micro locks off with twists, but as you guys can see, the twists are still intact, but the ends are very curly, which isn't a problem. Everything should tighten as the months go by. Normally it's best if you don't wash your hair after getting your sister locks installed. It's normally best to wait a couple months only because your hair will unravel. But sometimes it's hard to not get any type of water on your hair, especially if you sweat or if you take hot showers. The steam is gonna create water and you know, start to loosen up some things. And trust me, you guys, this is an easy fix. I'm starting off by parting a straight line so that her grid won't look crooked. Because the back of her hair is the shortest part, I'm not gonna be able to twist her hair, it won't stay. So I'm gonna actually box braid the back of her hair before I interlock it. And I know when you guys hear me say interlocking, you guys are used to this interlocking needle, but the one that I'm gonna be using this time is this very fine crochet needle. This is probably one of the smallest ones you'll see. The smaller the better, no pun intended. Okay, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna start off by braiding and I'm gonna braid as far as I can down. So as close as I can get to the tip, I'm gonna braid. After I'm done braiding, I'm gonna whip out the crochet needle and I'm going to put it through the braid from the right to the left and then hook the tip of the braid to the hook of the needle and close the latch and pull the braid through. And then I'm gonna put the crochet needle from the top to the bottom, hook the end of the braid onto the hook, close the latch and pull it through in the direction that I put the needle through. I'm gonna follow those same directions from left to right and from bottom to the top. This crochet needle is pretty small, so sometimes you might miss the latch, but the more you do this, the more you get the hang of it, and you can bounce right back. Because there's a lot of space still at the root, I'm gonna follow that same rotation from left to right, up to down, right to left, you know, until the root is a little bit tight, but not too tight. When I'm interlocking her hair in all four directions, this is called the four point rotation. There's also a three point rotation and a two point rotation. I prefer the four point rotation, but the whole end game to all of these rotations is that your hair or the micro locks or locks is pointed in the direction that you would like it to lay. So for example, I want her hair to lay down on her neck so my last rotation is going to be where I enter in from south to north and bring the hair right back down south 
Her tips or her ends might unravel or curl, which is fine. I'm just going to twist it back up, but I promise you it's not going anywhere in that part. It's always going to be there because I interlocked it. Interlocking is always the best route to go. Now I'm going to explain this to you guys one more time. And after that, I'm going to let you visual learners have a go at it. I'm going to explain using the numbers on a clock. You're going to first insert the needle from three to nine and then hook the braid and pull it through. And then you're going to hook the needle from 12 to six, hook the end of the braid to the hook, close your latch and pull back through at 12. And then you're going to push the needle in from nine o'clock to three o'clock, hook the braid on and pull back through to nine. Your last fourth rotation is going to be from six to 12, hook the braid on and pull back through to six. And you're going to follow those same four rotations until you get back to that fourth rotation. There are going to be times where you are going to be using the two point rotation or even three point rotation. This time, I think I used the two point rotation because when I did box braid her hair, I really didn't leave that much space. And whichever direction that I went, I needed her hair to lay down. I only used the crochet needle on her nape area. And after that, I followed the rest with an actual interlocking needle. If you guys would like to see how I use the interlocking needle, then that video will be posted in a few days. But this is how the back of her hair looks now that I've tightened and interlocked her sister locks. The nape of her hair should not unravel or loosen up by the time her next interlocking session. If I didn't mention already, I'm not a loctician, I'm not a specialist. But if you guys have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them so don't forget to leave a comment down below if you like this video leave it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe on your way out see you guys next time